Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes, and the reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out, and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the hand complex. We have finished with the wrist joint. Now we will be moving to the hand. In this video, we will be talking about the carpometacarpal joint. Okay, that is between the carpals and the metacarpals over here. So first, starting with your articulation, there are different joints present in the hand, right? Overall hand. There is the CMC joint, that is the carpometacarpal. There is the metacarpophalangeal joints over here. And then distally we have the PIP and DIP that is proximal interphalangeal joints and distal interphalangeal joints. These are the joints that are present in the hand. There are total 19 bones that we have and 19 joints. Okay. Now we are going to focus in this video for the carpometacarpal joints and we have five carpometacarpal joints that is at the thumb and other four fingers, right? So if you take the bone set, it is one over here and then four over here, total five. Now we are not going to discuss about the thumb because thumb already it is similar in structure. It has, its function is way more different compared to the other fingers. So thumb we will discuss separately. We will be talking about the second, third, fourth and fifth carpometacarpal joint over here, okay? So first articulation, your trapezoid which is present over here, the blue color bone articulates with your second metacarpal. Okay, this blue one. The next is your trapezium, the second carpal. It also articulates with your second metacarpal. So if you can see over here, second metacarpal articulates with two carpals, that is the trapezoid and trapezium, the two T's. Okay. Then the third metacarpal over here, that articulates with your capitate. And the next one, that is the fourth metacarpal, it articulates with two, right? Hamate and capitate. See if, if it's going up and it's going down. So hamate you can see the fourth metacarpal it is articulating with hamate as well as slight amount of capitate and then finally the green one that is the fifth metacarpal it will articulate with your hamate only over here on this side so that's how the articulation happens in your carpometacarpal joint now apart from this articulation there are few other things that we need to see first thing is your deep transverse metacarpal ligament. It prevents abduction of all your metacarpals over here, the abduction of all these metacarpals and it will also provide stability to your carpometacarpal joint over here. So that is its function. Apart from this transverse ligament, there is another transverse ligament that is the transverse carpal ligament, okay, which is present on top over here. So if you look at your hand from this angle, there is an arch that is formed right over here and this curve or an arch that is formed is called as the carpal arch. Now carpal arch has other components to it that is the carpals are held together by the ligaments right we studied under the wrist joint and these ligaments are the intercarpal ligaments this pink ones you can see over here. So the pink intercarpal ligaments hold your carpal bones together and on top of it, there is the transverse carpal ligament like this and all these structures together, they form a tunnel that is called as the carpal tunnel through which all your flexor muscles pass and create flexion. So the carpal tunnel is present over here. On top, there is the transverse carpal ligament. At the bottom, there is the intercarpal ligament which is holding the carpal arch and together it forms a carpal tunnel, right? So these are some of the important structures that are present in this region. Next, going to the range of motion of carpometacarpal joint, it is seen that as you move from radial side to ulnar side, the range of motion increases. So we are not considering the thumb, right? So at the second carpometacarpal joint, the movement is very less. And as you keep moving radially, the movement keeps increasing. And here you can see there is some amount of movement that you can see. So the range of motion increases from the radial side to ulnar side where the second and third metacarpals they are immobile 
okay in mobile they have zero degree of freedom whereas the fourth cmc joint fourth one this one is a plain synovial joint so it will allow some amount of movement so fourth has some amount of flexion and extension you can see slight amount of flexion and extension in this area okay this area there will be slight amount of flexion and extension and then the fifth one the final one it has some amount of flexion extension as well as abduction adduction so you can see this is a very rigid part that is the second and third fourth there is some amount of flexion extension and over here you can see some amount of abduction adduction and flexion extension so so bottom line the range of motion increases from radial to ulnar side and one last thing that we need to understand about this is the second and the third carpometacarpal joint that we just talked about it is completely fixed and it has a very stable axis and it provides axis for all the other carpometacarpal joints to move and create a position now what does this mean the second and the third carpometacarpal they have a axis around which the movement happens of other carpometacarpal joints okay so the axis is little hard to uh, visualize but this stable axis allows the movement around it okay that around that axis the movement happens of the other that is the th fourth and the fifth carpometacarpal joint so if you can see over here the opposition movement i said right opposition is this movement so this movement is happening around somewhat this axis right somewhat this axis so the axis will be somewhere in the second and third metacarpal region but the movement is happening over here the axis is not present exactly where the movement is happening but it's like a hypothetical axis which is somewhere uh, away from your actual movement that is happening of opposition right so that's all we have for this video what did we see we saw what are the joints present in your hand we saw how many bones and joints are present and then the articulation at the carpometacarpal joints and how the range of motion improves from radial to ulnar and the axis of the carpometacarpal joint along with your carpal tunnel which is formed by your transverse carpal ligament your carpal bones and the intercarpal ligaments right so with that we finish off this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my content please like share and subscribe to the channel it will really help me out and thank you for watching